Hey friends, so today we are going to get into related rates. Now, this is essentially um, a host of different word problems that we can do with rates. Remember that when we are being asked for rate, um, that's just the derivative, right? So, so all of these problems, we kind of go through and we go through the same steps. First of all, we want to kind of draw everything out so that we have a picture of what we what we're trying to do. Um, then you want to state everything that you know, and there's gonna be some rates you know, okay? Um, and then there's gonna be some lengths you know. Then we want to state what we want. Then you're gonna look at all the things you know and all the things you want, and you're gonna try and find a formula in your world <laughs> um, that brings all of those things together, okay? So once you then have that formula, you will um, find the derivative using implicit differentiation and then substitute for all the things that you do know. And that will leave you with one thing you don't know and solve for the one you don't know. Okay, that's it. <laughs> um, but it's not, gonna, it's not that easy and it's not gonna feel that easy. Um, so we're just gonna go through a few. Um, the more you do, the more you will get used to it and the more success you will see, okay? All right, so here's the first, so related rate problems explain how related components of a dynamic system change over time. Um, when we say a dynamic system, a dynamic system just refers to a system of elements that change over time, okay? They're not stationary. For example, how does the rate at which one inflates a balloon, which we would say delta volume or change in volume, affect the rate at which the radius of the balloon changes? So as a balloon gets bigger, the radius is going to change, right? Um, so the surface area of the balloon is increasing at, at particular instantaneous velocities, and the length of the radius is, is increasing at particular instantaneous velocities. And, and I purposely just use that word instantaneous there because what I need you to understand is all of these questions, we are taking a snapshot in time. We're taking a dynamic system and we're stopping it right there and saying, okay, let's just, let's just freeze frame this, um, what's happening right at this moment, okay? All right, so first question, and I'm gonna walk you through those steps that I just talked about. So air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 100 centimeters cubed per second. How fast is, so as soon as you see, oh, sorry, I don't know what happened there. How fast is, as soon as you see that, you want to think to yourself, that's a rate, okay? If you want a rate, you need a derivative. So how fast is the radius of the balloon changing when the diameter is 50 centimeters? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is draw a diagram. So I have a spherical balloon. Um, I know that the moment in time that I'm looking at is 50 centimeters, and I know that I'm inputting air into this balloon at a rate of 100 centimeters cubed per second, okay? Now, the next step is to state what you know. Well, let's read through the question and state what we know. We know the rate at which the air is going in. So that's the rate of the volume, right? Air going in would be the volume of the balloon. Um, so we know dV over dt, okay? We know the rate already, that is a derivative, right? The derivatives are the instantaneous rates. So we know dV over dt is going to be changing at a rate of 100 centimeters cubed per, per second, okay? So I write that as dV over dt in the categories of what I know. Now, what do I want? I want the rate of the radius of the balloon changing when the diameter is 50. So when the diameter is 50, that's our instantaneous moment in time. Um, so we might as well call the radius 25 there, right? Because we're dealing with the radius anyway. So I want the rate of the radius changing. So we'll call that dr over dt. That'll be the rate of the radius changing, okay? Okay, so we're looking for dr over dt when r is 25. Now we want to think, is there a formula that brings all these things together? We're talking about the volume 
and we're talking about the radius and we're talking about a sphere. Well, the volume of a sphere would bring that all together. Okay, so I'm going to use V equals four over three pi r cubed. Yes, those are formulas that we would think you remember from days gone by. So you may want to review some of those formulas. Make sure you're aware of what's what there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take this static relationship and turn it into a dynamic relationship. So V equals four over three pi r cubed refers to a formula that's not moving, it's not changing. If I take the derivative of this, that will change it to a dynamic formula, okay? It'll change to a formula involving rates, essentially. So I'm gonna do that implicitly. So I'm taking the derivative of V, well, that's just gonna be dV over dt. Um, don't get caught up, lots of kids get confused with pi. You need to see that four over three pi is just a number. It's just the coefficient on R, right? Pi is not a variable, it's a number. So I'm going to take my three, I'm going to bring it up here. So that'll be four over three pi times three. Well, that'll just leave me with four pi, okay? And then R drops down a degree, so that'll be R squared. But then I have to take the derivative of the inside function which would be r, so that'll be times dr over dt, okay? So just like we were doing with implicit derivation. Okay, now when I look at this dynamic formula, I'm gonna ask myself, I'm gonna kind of take stock here and say, what do I know? Well, I know dv over dt, that was told to me in the question, and I know R at this moment, that was told to me in the question. So I can fill in everything I know, and the one thing I don't know is the thing I was asked to solve for, which was dr over dt, okay? So I'm gonna plug in 100 for dv over dt and 25 for R. Now, essentially, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. Um, 25 squared times four, and then um, divide both sides by that constant term, okay? So I end up with 100 over 2500 pi is dr over dt. Um, you want this an exact value unless you're told otherwise, so we're gonna leave pi there, but we will reduce that fraction. That's one over 25 pi and you wanna think about your units. Now don't get caught up in your units. Remember that we're talking about a rate. So it has to, a rate is always something over something, right? We're now talking about the length of a radius. So that's a one dimensional length. So that'd be centimeters over speed, okay? So the radius of the balloon is increasing at a rate of one over 25 pi centimeters per second when the diameter is 50 centimeters. Okay, it's that rate and only that rate when the diameter is 50 centimeters. That's my snapshot in time that I'm talking about. Okay, yay, you did your first related rates question. Let's do like 50 more. Um, formula to know, you have a little section in your book, you might wanna just copy some of these down. Okay, um, volume of a sphere, surface area of a sphere, volume of a cylinder, surface area of a cylinder, area of a trapezoid is helpful, and volume of a cone is helpful as well. Okay. Okay. Here is an inverted cone question. Now, kids don't like these guys, um, but we're just going to go through the same sort of seven steps that we did with the first question, okay? A water tank has a shape of an inverted cone. Inverted cone just means that the, the cone itself is not on the... the Circular part pointing up, it's actually pointing down like that, okay? So the tip is actually at the bottom. Um, with a base radius of two meters and a height of four meters. If the tank is being filled at a rate of two meters cubed per minute, find the rate of the level of the water rising when the water is three meters deep. Okay, so. I'm just gonna draw this out so I get an idea of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a cone that's inverted. I know the radius of the cone is two and the height is four. 
And then I have a particular level of water that I'm going to be looking at. This is the dynamic portion, right? As this fills up, as I put more water in here, the height will go up. And as the height goes up, the radius also changes, right? Because every time the height gets higher and higher and higher, that circle, that's the base, is getting wider and wider and wider. Okay. Okay, so what do I know? I know the volume. I was told that um, the tank was being filled at a rate of, sorry, I should, I should rephrase that just for clarification. I don't know the volume. I know the rate that the volume is increasing, okay? So that's dB over dt. So I have dB over dt is two meters cubed per minute. What I want is, um, it says find the rate of the level of water rising. So I actually want how the height is changing. That would be the rate of the water, level of water rising. So that would be dH with respect to time. So I'm looking for dH over dt when h is three, okay? Okay, now I ask myself, I'm looking at height. I have um, knowledge of a radius. Um, I have knowledge of volume. Is there any formula that would bring all that together? And there is, it's the volume of the cone. Now, here's a problem. Volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. I do not want to use that in this form. And the reason I want you to be comfortable to say that is because I have too many variables here, right? I'm dealing with a v, an r, and an h. v is helpful because I know that rate. h is helpful um, because that's what I've been asked for. I've been asked to find dh over dt. r is not helpful, it's in our way. Okay, so we want to think to ourselves, is there a way to transform R and write R as an H value instead? Because I have to have H there anyway, okay? And there is, when you think about the concept of similar triangles, okay? If I, um, if I showed you, like, not necessarily similar triangles, just similar shapes in general. Um, but every time this height of the water increases here, this ratio of the radius over h would always stay in the same proportion, right? Okay, even if the water was here, that would give me the same proportion as the other ones. They would always increase with um, proportionality to them. So what I'm going to think about is I'm going to say, okay, that means r over h has to equal 2 over 4, and I can rearrange that and actually solve for um, I can write R in terms of H, okay? So if I said R over H equals two over four, that would mean that R is two H over four, right? Which is one half H. So R is one half H. So what I can do is I can replace my R value with H over two, and then that would give me a formula, I clean that up, but that would give me a formula that just involves H instead of an H and an R, and that's gonna be much easier to work with, okay? So I've replaced my R with H over two. Now that's H over two squared. So H squared times H is gonna give me H cubed. And then down on the bottom, two squared will be four. So, what this gives me one fourth and one third, so that's going to be one twelve. So essentially, this is going to be pi over 12 times h cubed. Okay, pi over 12 times h cubed. I wrote it as one twelfth pi, same thing. Okay, so now I'm ready to take the derivative and create change my static formula into a dynamic one. So I'd have dv over dt on the, on the left side. Um, when I go to take the derivative of this, the three comes to the front, so that would end up being three over 12, which reduced to pi over four, like one over four times pi. The h would drop down to h squared, and then I'd have to take the derivative of the inside function, which is uh, dh over dt. Okay, so now I'm gonna plug in the things that I know. I know the rate of the volume. Um, I know h for my moment of time. And then I don't know dh over dt, but that's what I was asked to solve for. Okay, 
So I'm going to substitute in the values that I know. And now I'm going to solve for dh over dt. So I'm going to isolate dh over dt. I've got 3 squared here, which is 9. So this ends up being 9 over 4, 9 pi over 4. Essentially, I have to divide both sides by 9 pi over 4. Dividing by 9 pi over 4 is the same as multiplying by 4 over 9 pi. So when I go to multiply by 4 over 9 pi, I multiply that by the 2. That'll give me 8 over 9 pi. Okay. Now, you want to create some sort of a conclusion. And when you conclude, you want to have your proper unit. So I'm talking about the height. So that'd be meters per minute uh, when I'm dealing with the rate the height is changing. So the water is rising 8 over 9 pi meters per minute when the water is 3 meters deep. Okay? Having fun? Yes, of course you're having fun. Okay. Um, the ladder type question. So a 10 meter long ladder rests against the side of a building. If the bottom of the ladder is sliding away from the wall at a rate of one meters per second, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is six meters from the wall? Okay, so draw a little picture. You've got a ladder standing up against a wall. Now, what I want you to be comfortable with is kind of this statement. If, if X is going this way, on the ladder, if the bottom is going out, okay, then the top has to be coming down, right? Because the ladder is a fixed length. So if, if the bottom is coming this way, by default, the top will be coming down. So we're being asked, what's the rate that the top is coming down when the moment is the bottom is coming out at a rate of one meters per second, okay? Okay, so, what do I know? I know dx over dt. What do I want? I want dy over dt. Okay, and I want dy over dt when x is 6. Now, that's my moment in time, but my moment in time gives me the y moment in time as well because I can just use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So I know that if in my moment of time this is 6, I can go 10 squared minus 6 squared and get 8, okay? once I square root it. I'm just using the Pythagorean theorem to get y is 8 there. Okay, so now what is a formula that would connect the x, the y, and the hypotenuse of a triangle together? Well, that would be the Pythagorean theorem. So I know that 100 equals x squared plus y squared. Okay, I'm going to change that to a dynamic formula by taking the derivative. Well, that's going to be the derivative of 100 is 0. This will be 2x derivative of x, and this will be 2y derivative of y. Okay? Now, what do I know? Well, in that moment in time we just discussed, I know x was 6, I know y is 8, and I know dx over dt is 1. So I'm going to fill all those things in. The only thing I don't know is dy over dt. Um, and so now I can solve for dy over dt. Okay, so I'm just going to clear my ink here. And we're going to say, so I plugged in 6 for x, I plugged in 1 for dx over dt, and I plugged in 8 for y. Okay, 2 times 6 times 1, so that's going to be 12. I'm going to bring that over to the other side and divide by 16. Okay, and that ends up giving me negative 3 over 4. So a couple of things I want to talk about here. It makes sense um, that your y value is negative, okay, because your distance of your y value is decreasing right now, right? Think about this for a sec. If, if my fixed point, we always kind of look at these based on a fixed point. If my fixed point is there, it makes sense that the, y, the x value is getting away from that fixed point, so it, it is a positive value, but that the y value is heading towards that fixed point, so that should be a negative value, okay? And so our conclusion would be the height is falling 3 fourths meters per second when the ladder is 6 meters from the wall. Okay. Okay. 
Um, the next question that you have in your book is the one on the spotlight. Um, we're skipping that until tomorrow. Now, that may not make sense when you're watching the video, but uh, for those of you in class with me, um, I do related rates uh, over a period of two days. So I wanted to have one question to start tomorrow's lesson with. Um, now, I'm not going to do a separate video for it, but I, for those of you just watching the video, for the sake of the video, um, I will do the spotlight question at the end of the video. Okay, so um, if you're anxious to see the spotlight question, hang on, it'll be right at the end. Okay, okay. the next question is the following. A man walks north at 1.5 meters per second, and a woman, starting from the same point, walks west at 2 meters per second. At what rate is the distance between them increasing one minute after they start? So, a man is walking north, and a woman's walking west, and so they're walking away from each other, and we're looking for the rate of the distance between them. So what I need you to see there is I just formed a triangle with my hands, okay? Um, so this is going to use the Pythagorean theorem again. So essentially, I have a man walking north, so he would be the y value. The woman is walking west, so she would be the x value. And I'm looking for the rate the distance between them is changing, which I call d. You could call d for distance. You could call d for diagonal of the, of the triangle, um, whatever you like. Okay, so what do I have? Oh, and then the moment in time, sorry, is one minute after they start. Well, we have to be thinking about that for a second. Um, I need to know the actual length of X and Y here, right? If, if I walk 1.5 meters per second and a minute has passed, that gives me enough information to figure out the actual length of X at that point in time, okay? So... What do I have? I have that uh, dy over dt, the change for the man is 1.5 meters per second. I also have dx over dt, which would be two meters per second, okay? Um, I, I mentioned in that previous question how to kind of think through what numbers or what uh, rates will be positive and what rates will be negative. It's usually always with reference to a fixed point. So in both of these guys, both of them are walking away from the fixed point, and that's why they're both positive, okay? Um, okay, and then I'm looking for the rate for D, um, so DT over DT after a minute. So I have to figure out the X values and the Y values um, for uh, a minute. So if I am going 1.5 meters per second for 60 seconds, I would have gone 90 meters. Right, I just take 1.5 meters per second and times it by their 60 seconds in a minute. If I was going two meters per second for 60 seconds, that would be going 180 meters. Okay, so I'm looking for dd over dt after one minute, which is 60 seconds. Okay, so the formula I'm gonna use will be the Pythagorean theorem again, x squared plus y squared equals d squared. Okay, um, so here I am. Now I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So I've got 2d um, dd over dt equals 2x dx over dt and plus 2y dy over dt, okay? And now I start filling in everything I know. Well, I just told you that x was not, what, sorry, what was x? I have it in my calculator here. Oh, it was 90. Sorry, so x was 90 and y was 180. Well, I can use the Pythagorean theorem for that moment in time to actually figure out the distance, right? Remember, I'm not looking for the distance. This sometimes confuses kids. I'm not look, they're like, well, if I know the distance already, why do I have to write it in? Or why do I have to do all of this stuff? Because I'm not looking for the distance. I'm looking for the rate the distance is changing. That's the big difference in the wording there, okay? So I know the distance at that moment in time because I can just plug 90 and 180 into the Pythagorean theorem and get out whatever that gives me, right? Um, but I'm looking for the rate the distance is changing. So at 60 seconds, x will be 120. Y will be 90, I already told you that, and then I just plug that into the Pythagorean theorem and my D value is 150, okay? So now I know everything but DD over DT. So I plug in everything I know. I know that D was 150. I don't know DD over DT, that's what I'm gonna find out. 
I knew my uh, x value was 120 and my rate for x was 2. I knew my y value was 90 and my rate for y was 1.5. Okay, so now I'm just going to solve for dd over dt. So I'll clean up the right hand side and then divide both sides by 300 essentially. Okay, and then that will leave me with 2.5 meters per second. So after one minute, the distance between them is increasing at a rate of 2.5 meters per second. Okay? Okay, so uh, categories of related rate problems, just to give you an idea of some of the things you'll face here. Although there are infinite variety of related rate problems, there are several types which appear over and over and over and over again, okay? So here's a short list. Um, we have, and we've done some of these already, so we have the latter problem. Most often we'll employ the Pythagorean theorem, um, likely to be voted the most famous related rate problem type. The shadow problem uses similar triangles, so the problem most often involves a person walking away from a suspended light, okay? Um, we have the kite problem. Susie flies a kite and lets out the string. So if she lets out the string so that the kite moves away at a constant altitude, that should be kite, not kit. Uh, again, that will use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, intersections, so cars, boats, trains approaching an intersection. Um, often you'll use the Pythagorean theorem for it. Sometimes you'll use similar triangles, okay? Um, a sphere problem, so snowballs, tumors, melting ice, semicircular dome, you're gonna use the volume of a sphere. The cone problem, we did one of those already today, uh, voted most difficult by students worldwide. Uh, usually involves liquid of some type being pumped into a tank in the form of an inverted right circular cone. Use the formula for the volume of a, of a cone. The formula involves both a radius and a height, and most problems you'll have to set it up to eliminate one of those variables. In, in the example we did, we eliminated R, okay? But it might be the other way. You might have to eliminate H, right? You might have to write H in terms of R or R in terms of H. Okay. Um, a searchlight on an airplane sweeping along a shoreline. Uh, these problems generally involve setting up a right triangle and then either using sine or tangent. Okay. Um, again, the only way to get really comfortable with this is just to do lots of practice. So I have lots of practice for you. Um, and you just want to take your time and go through each one. Okay. Um, and start getting comfortable with all the different ways to go. Now, um, this is the homework for the next couple of days, um, but as promised, uh, stay with me. I'm not done. I'm going to do the spotlight question next, okay? Let's take a look at that spotlight question that we uh, had skipped so that we could start the next class with it. So, a spotlight on the ground shines on a wall 15 meters away. A person 1.7 meters tall walks from the spotlight toward the wall at a speed of one meters per second. How fast is the shadow on the wall decreasing when she is three meters from the wall? Okay, so I want you to have a little bit of a visual here. Essentially, here's my spotlight, okay? And here's my wall. And then I have a person who's 1.7 meters tall. Okay, so the person is heading towards the wall away from the spotlight. So um, and then what's going to happen is here's the person's shadow, right, against the wall. So like here's my shadow and then as I get closer, here's my shadow and then here's my shadow and my shadow is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? If you have a light behind you and you're walking towards the wall, your shadow will get smaller and smaller and smaller as you reach the wall, okay? Um, so that's kind of the context of what we're doing here. So I know that there's 15 meters between the spotlight and the wall, okay? So this distance here is 15 meters. So what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to, I'm going to call this x. So that is, so that's not the whole thing. That's just right here, okay? And x, x will be growing as the person walks closer to the wall, okay? And so then I'll call this guy y, 
and y will be decreasing as x increases, okay? So that's kind of the picture, but I kind of wanted to build it before I just showed it to you on the PowerPoint. So here it is on the PowerPoint, okay? So my spotlight is right here. And, and then I also added here 15 minus x. I don't really need that um, for this question, but point being, if the whole thing is 15 and this is x, this little section here will be 15 minus x, okay? So again, what do I have uh, and what do I want? I have essentially the rate at which uh, she's walking. So I have the rate of x. So I have dx over dt is one meter per second, okay? What do I want? I want the rate of the shadow, which would be dy over dt. And I want that when x is 12, that's my moment in time, okay? All right, so how do I relate all these things to each other? Well, the first thing I do is try and get ink flowing on my thing here. Okay, so what I can do is I can say, hey, I have similar triangles here, so I can set up a proportion with this basin height and use this basin height as well. Okay, so that's essentially what I'm gonna start with. So I'm gonna say 15 over y, so big base over big height will equal x over 1.2, which is little base over little height, okay? Now, I know at my moment in time, uh, x is gonna be 12. So that allows me to solve for y in my moment of time as well. If I plug in 12 for x and then isolate for y, I'll get y is 2.125, okay? So now the equation that I'll use um, is still this guy. I'm just gonna rearrange it. So I, I essentially just cross multiplied. Uh, 15 times 1.7 gives me the 25.5 and then X times Y gives me X, Y. So it's this guy here that is my sort of static equation that I now want to turn into a dynamic equation by taking the derivative. Now, when I go to take the derivative, you have to realize that this is the product rule, right? So that's actually going to be um, the derivative of f. So I'm going to do uh, dx over dt times y plus x times dy over dt. And then the derivative of this guy would be zero. Okay, so that gives me this. Now, there's my dynamic equation. I plug in everything I know. Well, I know dx over dt is one. I know y, I know x for the moment in time. That gives me everything but that dy over dt so I can solve for the dy over dt, okay? So dx over dt was one, uh, the y was 2.125 and the x was 12. This is just 2.125, I'll subtract it from both sides and then divide both sides by 12. So I get negative 17 over 96. And so when she is three meters from the wall, the shadow is decreasing at a rate of 0 0.177 meters per second or in exact value, because I didn't actually give you rounding instructions on this one. So in exact value, you'd say 17 over 96. Now, in my statement, I said the word decreasing, so I didn't need to write the negative, okay? Um, you can either say decreasing at that rate, or you can say is changing at a rate of negative uh, 17 over 96 meters per second, okay? So that was the spotlight question that um, we had put a pause on. Um, this is the same homework that I had given you before the spotlight question, um, because this is essentially just for day two of working with related rates, okay? But that's everything for related rates. Uh, make sure you're trying all these problems and uh, do connect if you do have any questions or concerns. Thanks, guys.